Okay, how you doing today? It's time for the final exam. You all have done my first two exams, so you pretty much know how the exam is going to go. Pretty much, again, true, false, fill in the blank, multiple choice. Again, be very careful reading all the, all the uh, questions, making sure that you understand each, every word, try to find, you know, a meaning behind every word that's in there so don't just get caught up and see an answer and say oh that's it and then you didn't read the uh, question that answer carefully so make sure you take time to do that uh, so make sure you take your time uh, find yourself in a position in a place where you're able to kind of relax spend some time studying as we get prepared for the final exam now the final exam will cover chapters 11 Race and ethnicity, chapter 12, sex, power, gen I mean, sex, gender, and sexuality. And then on chapter 14 on marriage and families. So pretty much you all have the PowerPoint presentations available. You all answer the weekly discussion questions. The weekly discussion questions are the ones that's pretty much kind of lead you towards what's going to be on the exam. So I like the weekly discussion questions because the answers you all are very good. Uh, at the same time, it allows you to have a fill-in more for the chapter. Uh, as well so you also have my uh, PowerPoint videos uh, as well in which I talk about the contents of the exam so this is extra support for what's on the final exam so this particular chapter we're going to go over on race uh, so I'm just basically what I'm going to do is just go over what's going to be on the exam so some of this stuff you know I might skip through a little bit because I don't want to make an hour long video and students say oh man it's an hour I ain't about to go through all this no, uh, so I'm just going to kind of go highlight some of the biggest things to know for the exam. So, of course, the exam, I don't add in statistics and dates and stuff like that. So when you see statistics and dates on these slides, I'm just going to read over it. And then a lot of terminology on here. Make sure you're familiar with it, with the terminology, uh, definitions that, you know, like the chapter on race and ethnicity has a lot of definitions on there, terminology, so to say. So being familiar with the terms on there. Uh, of course, all three major sociological theories will be on the exams. Uh, we're gonna have um, conflict theory perspective on these three chapters, functionist and symbolic interactions perspective. The biggest thing is keeping in mind what's the difference between the two and being able to know how, how to identify them. So pretty much that's gonna be the logistics of the exam. So this particular chapter on race and ethnicity, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit from the uh, it may, you may see some changes from the earlier chapters. I just kind of clean it up a little bit. Uh, so this slide, as I go through them, say, hey, you need to know this. No, nah, this probably won't be on the exam, so we're just going to keep going. Uh, so these stuff like the world population, percentages are not on the exam. So, of course, the definition of race. The title is race and ethnicity. So you know race and ethnicity will be on the exam. Uh, knowing the definition of race is present right here. So there won't be anything you have to Google and look up going through the uh, outside of the exam. So everything is right here in the PowerPoint presentations or in the book. So definition of race, make sure you're familiar with the definition of race. Uh, the five categories of race not in here uh, on the exam. Of course, you got to know ontological equality and eugenics for the exam, um, as well as being familiar with modern eugenics. Now, remember that because of each terminology does not necessarily mean that each terminology like racism, institution, racial inequality will be an exam question. Again, it might have a, a definition and it might be A, B, C, or D, true or false, but just because it's there and I mentioned it on the exam does not mean it's an actual exam question. It may be part of the answers of A, B, C, or D and able to rule them out. So. I'm going to mention all these terminologies on here, but at the same time, just make sure you're able to rule it out. Answer it or rule it out. So you have to know racism, uh, institutional racism, racial inequality for the exam. Uh, minority groups and dominant groups, you also have to be familiar with that. Of course, remember the minority groups are people who've been singled out for unequal treatment, uh, regard themselves as collective discrimination, and then there's the opposite of the dominant group. The group with the most power, greater privileges, and higher social status. Make sure you're also familiar with ethnic work. Uh, definitely ethnicity. Having remember, you can, you know, you don't choose your race 
you know, when you're born, but you can choose your ethnicity. So race is what you're born with, ethnicity is what you choose to identify with. So there is a part of ancestry that goes on in which you say, hey, well, this is part of the culture of my family. This is what I grew up in. However, you know, there's nothing stopping you from studying another culture's ethnicity. So you can choose your own ethnicity. Symbolic ethnicity, remember, uh, nationality. Uh, use, for example, St. Patrick's Day, um, Cinco de Mayo. You don't have to have a, you know, actual citizenship in that country, but you can still be able to celebrate it. Uh, prejudice, racism, discrimination for the exam. Remember, uh, prejudice and discrimination does not necessarily have to deal with race. So you can be prejudiced, again, for someone who is uh, the height, weight, gender, uh, physical disabilities, uh, sexual orientation. So it doesn't have to deal with race. So you can be prejudiced and discriminate on a bunch of things. But however, when it deals with race, then it's become racism when you're dealing with both discrimination and prejudice on the basis of race. So make sure you know the difference between those. Uh, all my theories are going to be in there, of course, culture theory, being familiar uh, with culture theory, uh, knowing that the you know, cultural transmission is that prejudice is a part of the culture's norms and it's transmitted through culture. You know, that, you know, basically kids are not born with prejudice attitude, but they learn it from their family peers, teachers, and meeting others. Children learn prejudice through socialization, so make sure you're familiar with culture theory. Uh, then also is the safe scapegoat theory, make sure you're familiar with that, blaming someone else for your own problems. Uh, authoritarian personality is pretty much that, you know, this is a long paragraph, but I just, two paragraphs, but I just wanted to explain it very detailed. Uh, so make sure you're familiar with authoritarian personality for the exam. Like I said, I don't want to make this an hour long video. So if it seems like I'm just going through this really fast, it's just that some students look and say, oh, it's 60 minutes. That's too long. And then try to fast forward it. If I can keep it down to a minimum of time, then that'll get students' attention and say, okay. But it's pretty much, you all know my first two exams, so you wouldn't be surprised when you look at a PowerPoint and say, oh, this look like uh, Professor Logan's exam question. Also be familiar with race and formation theory. Uh, of course, theory of systemic racism. Um, be familiar with this one as well. Uh, Figgins theory, rooted in historical documentation, says that racism is built into the very foundation of U.S. society and it now exists within every aspect of society. Make sure you're familiar with systemic racism theory. Of course, intersectionality theory, uh, be familiar with this one. Uh, people often are disadvantaged by multiple sources of oppression, their race, class, gender, identity, sexual orientation, religion, and other identity markers. Make sure you review this and be familiar with this one. Uh, the functionist perspective, they talk about how functional how prejudice is functional society and it, it's a, creates an in-group solidarity, but it benefits positively for the dominant group, not for everybody, you know. So make sure you're familiar more with the functionist perspective, which is on the exam. Uh, again, this is just more information about the functionist uh, perspective, so I'm not going to read over all this stuff, but, you know, be familiar, because this is a student, you have a job to read over this and get familiar with it. I provided information for you. You discussed it in the discussion questions, the weekly discussion questions. So, you know, this is uh, pretty much what y'all have been doing already. Also, the conflict theory as well. Uh, the inequality that, exi that exists with gender, social class, education, race, and ethnicity. Make sure you're familiar with that one. Jim Crow laws and civil rights movement. Make sure you're familiar with this as well. Um, State and local laws that enforce racial segregation. Make sure you're familiar with them. Also, knowing the civil rights movement. Next slide. Split labor market theory. Make sure you're familiar with split labor market theory. Uh, workers split them along racial, ethnic, gender, any other lines. Uh, the split is exploited by owners to weaken the bargaining power of workers. Make sure you're familiar with that. Next slide, reserve labor force. Uh, be familiar with this one as well. The part divisions among workers reflect anger and hostility 
away from the power elite and direct these powerful emotions towards other racial and ethnic groups. Instead of working as, uh, instead of recognizing their common class interests and in in working for their mutual welfare, workers learn to fear and distrust one another. Make sure you're familiar with this one. Of course, symbolic interactionism, remember they look at the face-to-face -face interactions, um, micro level, they look at how perception and labels create prejudice, uh, labels and self-fulfilling stereotypes. Make sure you're familiar with that. And then again, further information on symbolic interactionism as well. Make sure you review this as well. More information on the symbolic interactionism. Uh, so here's a lot of the definitions and terminologies I want you to be familiar with. So definitely review the theories. Of course, you know, knowing the difference between each theory is very important. So make sure you prepare for that on the exam. Um, these definitions for terminology, I need you to definitely know genocide. Uh, compartmentalize population transfer ethnic cleansing so make sure you review these and be familiar with these uh, internal colonialism segregation assimilation and pluralism also called multiculturalism be familiar with these as well of course, again, prejudice and discrimination. We talk, talked about that earlier. Be familiar with that. Individual dis discrimination, you know, that's face-to-face -face in discrimination. The negative treatment of people by other individuals. And then there's the institutional discrimination, the, you know, disadvantage of minority groups that are built into society's institutions. So this particular slide, just kind of review these. I'm not going over all of these for the exam. Pretty much, I don't believe this is on the exam. Uh, just kind of helpful information. So this stuff pretty much is not, shouldn't be on the exam, no. So this won't be on the exam. So that ends that one. Now we're going to slide on over to the next one, which is chapter 12. So, sex, gender, and sexuality. So, therefore, making sure you're familiar with this. And, of course, you got to know gender stratification. Look at how males and females have equal access to property, power, and prestige. Uh, the definition of sexuality, sex, and gender. Remember, you're born with your sex. However, you can choose your gender. So you can't choose your sex, but you can choose your gender, represent the behaviors and attitudes that a society consider proper for its males and females, masculinity and femininity. Uh, be familiar with the definition of sexism. More information on, you know, sexism and got to be familiar with hegemonic masculinity, the condition in which men are dominant and privileged and its dominance is privilege is invisible. And of course, you are very much familiar with gender roles. So make sure you're also familiar with these terminologies for the final exam. So this part right here, uh, be honest with you, I'm going to help you out. I think this is more like a true and false question, like which of these don't belong. So which of the following is how females became a minority group, A, B, C, D, which of these are not, or one of those questions like that. So the next couple of slides you know, as you remember, we talked about human reproduction and human reproduction, how the ladies would become pregnant and couldn't be able to move around and, you know, they had to nurse the children and stuff like that. So the next couple of slides also talk about hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, so as you're familiar with the PowerPoint presentation in the video in class and stuff like that. Um, so these next slides just kind of talk about the patriarchy as well. Definition, men dominate society centers on human reproduction. So these next couple of slides again just talked about how the hunting and gathering society, how they say men took control of society. So these won't be on the exam, like these particular slides, but the whole, I think that just that first slide I just mentioned, it's kind of like which of these don't belong, which of these are not. I believe that's the question. So these particular slides just kind of be familiar with the whole process of the human reproduction, 
uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat and with the continuing so-called dominance. Now, we get into feminism. Definitely feminism on the exam. Um, the philosophy that men and women should be politically, economically, and socially equal. Then we also have the three waves of feminism. The right to vote, equal pay in the workplace, and focus on problems of women in least industrialized nations. They challenge gender roles and sexuality. So, again, first wave. Make sure you're familiar with that. And, and remember, there's no dates on this stuff. So make sure you're familiar with the first wave, the right to vote, the main thing. Second wave. And then also the third wave. So make sure you're also familiar with that as well. Uh, this particular slide, no. Uh, and this just talks about gender, uh, the gender socialization. Uh, this won't be on the exam. I'm talking about percentages and data. Of course, hegemonic masculinity would be on the exam. Uh, this part will not be on the exam. I don't believe it is, but it just talks about sexual orientation. Something I ask you about which attraction to, you know, what sexual orientation and what category is, you know, not going to ask about that, what a person's attraction is and uh, what people identify their sexual orientation is in, a, in different several categories. This won't be on the exam. Uh, just more information, like I said, we discussed in class. Like this stuff won't be on the exam. Now, you all know the functionist, conflict, and symbolic interactionist theory is going to be on the exam. Uh, so make sure you look at stuff like Parson sex role theory that men and women perform their sex roles as breadwinners and wives and mothers respectively. Uh, make sure you're familiar with this one. Psychoanalytic theories, uh, remember be familiar with these as well. The functionist perspective, again, make sure you go read over these. I don't, I'm not going to go through each and every one of the slides, but this is the functionist perspective. You all know, okay, this is going to be on the exam. You know, um, So just all uh, so this is just the pointing out what the theory is, and this is just things that support it. So I'm not saying every slide is going to be on the exam, but making sure you're familiar with it as well. More information on the conflict theory. Symbolic interactionist theory as well. Be familiar with this one as well. Again, just. Going over the slides, and then the so-called doing gender. I'm not sure if this is on the exam or not. Uh, and then we get more into stratification, inequality. Just more examples of uh, gender stratification, as I mentioned in the first slide. So there's just more examples and stuff like this. None of the dates, none of the stuff going to be on the exam. None of the statistics data is going to be on the exam, but. Definitely, you got to know the glass ceiling uh, and the glass escalator. Be familiar with these two definitions, which would be on the exam. And that is it for that particular slide. I told you all I won't keep you here all day because I don't want you all looking to get intimidated and be like, oh, man, you got an hour video. So I'm sure, and I'm going to know I'm long, y'all know I'm long-winded. So I am going to shorten this up as much as I can and then the last chapter on marriage and family so definitely you got you know marriage is the question on marriage is going to be on the exam the question on family is going to be on the exam so make sure you know the definition of these two the family and marriage next slide look about the family orientation appropriation uh, won't be on the exam I don't believe it's on the exam but like I said all of this stuff is good to know I mean, it's not just, okay, let me take a class and see if I can pass the test. That's part of it, but at the same time, you know, it's part of learning, too. So, and I believe that, you know, from y'all discussion questions, you all have learned a lot. Uh, and interacting with you all, you all have learned a lot from this course. Um, so, this is the final exam. Don't get stressed out. Relax a little bit. Uh, you got to know extended family, nuclear family, a family composed of one or two parents and their children. And then there's endogamy and exogamy. So make sure you know these for the exam. Monogamy. 
definitions of monogamy and polygamy is on the exam. Make sure you're familiar with them. So polyandry, poly polygamy is uh, on the exam. <clears throat> this is just more examples of, I added this in as far as more examples of polygamy. So it's not getting this stuff on right here, this slides and the previous slide won't be on the exam. Just the definition pretty much. Uh, Patrol locality, living near the husband's family. Matrial locality, living near or with the mother's family. Uh, neo locality is registered. It's kind of neutral when you're not living close or with either one of them. So make sure you review this slide as well. Um, definitions. Interested in patrilineal descent. Matrilineal descent, of course, will be on the exam. Bilateral descent, be familiar with those as well. Uh, this is just examples, so this these slides won't be on the exam. Just kind of giving more examples and stuff of how, why, you know, the, the, the culture and history by the residency and the lineage. So remember the functionist perspective, these are the functions of conflict and the symbolic interactions perspective will definitely be on the exam again. Uh, the functions and looks at the functions and dysfunctions of a marriage. Conflict, it gets the struggles between a husband and wife, in particular focus on power. And in a symbolic interactive perspective, on a micro, face-to-face, -face, and, and they, they look at everyday situations, some of the problems with gender, housework, and child care with the children as well in a marriage. Um, functions perspective, make sure you're familiar. You already know, this is the last chapter, so I don't have to beat it across your head. You already know I have to be, as a student, familiar with the functions perspective on marriage. So make sure you go through this slide, again, review this. Uh, you got to know the functions of the family, socialization, regulation of sexual activity, social placement, material, and emotional security. Make sure you know the functions of the family. Also, more information on the functions perspective. So this gives more and more details regarding the uh, functions of the family as well. So these pretty much won't be on the exam per se, but the, the reason the, the functions of the family will be, but I don't really break them down like that, you know, like on these slides, no. So more information on the functions perspective. So then we get to the conflict theory. Of course, that's going to be an, a, on the exam. Uh, more information on the conflict theory. Make sure you're familiar with this for the exam. Read over these slides, all of these slides. Um, and it's not so much a this is a lot of reading, but as long as you, you get the concept behind it, and once you get the concept, you're good, you know. So just kind of review these as well. Then the symbolic interactionist theory, read over this as well. And then you already have, I know this video, I'm going through slides, but you already have access to the videos and to the PowerPoint presentation. So, of course, uh, just read over and be familiar with. These are more examples of interactionist perspective on marriage and family. Uh, social exchange theory definitely will be on the exam. Theory suggests you shop around for partners to make the best deal that they can. They assess the advantages and disadvantages of a potential spouse. Describes courtship and marriage in forms of negotiation. Make sure you're familiar with social exchange theory. Uh, arranged marriages, be familiar with this as well. Uh, this slide right here, I'm not sure. Ideal and real marriage, just making sure, you know, be it identified. Because I can't remember all the questions on the exam. Uh, but just make sure you identify it, though. So, of course, for those who don't have kids and those of us have kids, like myself, parenting is very expensive. It is a lifelong commitment. Do not forget that when you all have kids and say, oh, man, these kids are expensive. Yep, they are. And you have to provide and take care of your kids, but having a child is the, is the best thing in my life that ever happened to me. So as a parent, I know you all feel the same. And people who are expecting to have kids soon, or one day in the future, you, I'm sure you have to feel the same way. Empty nesters and sandwich generation would be on the exam. Make sure you're familiar with these two as well. Remember, no statistics and data, I won't be having this. So a lot of this stuff you see with statistics and dates and stuff like that, no, won't be asking these questions. You have to be familiar with the divorce stages, the conflict theory uh, stages of 
divorce. Hopefully, I like again never experienced this. Uh, the prior condition stage, the frustration awareness stage, active conflict, combination solution, and then the follow up or aftermath stage. Make sure y'all familiar with that. Uh, causes for the high U.S. divorce rate will be on the exam, and then that starts. I got it twice, but individualism, uh, owners on the rise, romantic love fades. Women are less dependent on men's, on men. Uh, I'm gonna say like my grandmother to say men's. <laughs> Women are less dependent on men, not men's. <laughs> uh, many of today's marriages are stressful, so make sure you uh, to remember these. Uh, divorce has become socially acceptable, and legally, a divorce is easy to get. So make sure you're familiar with these. Uh, who gets divorced? Uh, be familiar with this slides as well. Also, I think number four for sure. Uh, and divorce changes, of course, many children's lives, causing emotional and behavior problems and raising the risk of dropping out of school and getting in trouble in the law. Definitely number four, be familiar with that one. Um, that's pretty much on remarriage and blended families. Um, not percentages on one parent families. Number seven for sure, I remember this one that. Children growing up in a single-parent family start out poor, get less school, and they end up with lower incomes as adults. Uh, I think I remember that being on the exam, but take a look at all these, but I believe number seven. Take a closer look at that one. Cohabitation is on the exam, as uh, elderly people used to call it back in the day, shacking up. The sharing of a household by an unmarried couple. Make sure you're familiar with that one. Uh, singlehood, no, I don't think that's on the exam. Boomerang kids is definitely an exam. Increasing share of young people have completed college but have not found a job yet who have yet returned home to live with their parents. Make sure you're familiar with boomerang kids. Uh, and then Nicholas, this is the last slide for the exam. Make sure you're familiar with Nicholas Stenny. He talked about the what makes a successful marriage. So make sure you're familiar with this slide as well. Uh, so pretty much wanted to summarizing real quick i don't want to be here all day uh going over every every slide uh, and regarding what's going to be on the final exam one of the things again take your time for the final make sure you read each and every question carefully make sure you read each answer carefully uh do not skip any questions also do not stress yourself out i know it is finals week and also you have other classes, make sure you get all your work done for your other classes as well as my class. Uh, finals week is like that 12th round of boxing, the fourth quarter with two minutes left. Uh, it's not stressful, you are comfortable, you got this. And congratulations uh, for completing another semester. I enjoyed and glad to have you in my class. You're always welcome to come to any other class that I have. Uh, and any recommendations again for a job or college anything further education let me know send me an email but uh hopefully you learned a lot in this class i do appreciate you taking my class and at the same time feel free to have any questions send me an email and let me know uh continue do me a favor uh continue to stay in school i know things can pop up and it's been very difficult during this pandemic and you need to congratulate yourself as students, uh, especially during the pandemic, to be able to do good for, you know, continue your education, especially in an online setting. So, congratulate yourself, but after finals, <laughs> celebrate a little bit after finals. Don't get started too early. I want you to finish finals and say, okay, I'm done with finals. Finish another semester. Another chapter in my life has been, you know, uh, progress and succeeded and for those who are graduating congratulations to you uh continue on your success and you will do very well don't let nobody tell you nothing different saying you won't be successful that's not true you will be so uh thank you for taking my class any questions you know feel free to always email me